Welcome, Javier Churches, and welcome to those joining us in other places as well. We join together on this Transfiguration Sunday, which is also St. Valentine's Day. Usually we record this in church, but we've had snow, as you can see, we've had ice, and we've been a unable to meet up together. So we're recording this in my garden this today. We do have some announcements. Please do look at the, the website and there's various links to services, to the podcast and so on. But I draw your attention to the fact that this Wednesday, Lent begins, is Ash Wednesday. It's the 17th February, and we're having a service by Zoom at 12 noon, and everyone's welcome. The link is on the web page, so please do join us, join us Wednesday at 12. It'll just be 20, 30 minutes at the most. Then the following Wednesday, the 24th of February, we begin our Lent study group. And this year, we're looking at the theme Caring for Creation. And there is a handbook which is available from your courses and the link is on the website. If you do have any difficulty, please speak to Arthur or myself and we'll be able to help. And I think these are all the announcements. We have our call to worship. God said, let light shine in the darkness. Lord, shine your light into our lives. We see the glory of God in the face of Christ. The light of Christ is with us day by day. And let us follow the light of Christ together. Let us worship God with thanks and praise. us pray. God of grace and glory, to this worried world, you reveal your presence in radiant glory and in gentle whispers, on mountain tops and in shadowed valleys, in classrooms and hospital beds, in homes and churches, in the quiet of nature or on busy streets. Yours is a presence that pushes aside our fear to calm us. Yours is a love that transforms our doubt with reassurance. We come to dwell in your goodness 
and offer you our praise and our adoration. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that many things keep us from trusting fully in your love. We are often distracted by our own desires and disappointments. We cling to anger and resentment. We fear for the future rather than seek signs of hope. Forgive us and shine your love upon us so that your glory may be seen in us and give us courage to follow Jesus wherever he leads. And to all who humbly seek the mercy of God in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Be at peace with God and with yourself and with one another. And now we join in our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah and said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your masters from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left. And the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, Suddenly, a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. Amen. The second reading is from Mark chapter 9, starting at verse 2. 
Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain where they were alone. As they looked on, a change came over Jesus, and his clothes became shining white, whiter than anyone in the world could wash them. Then the three disciples saw Elijah and Moses talking with Jesus. Peter spoke up and said to Jesus, Teacher, how good it is that we are here. We will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He and the others were so frightened that he did not know what to say. Then a cloud appeared and covered them with its shadow, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my own dear son, listen to him. They took a quick look round but did not see anyone else. Only Jesus was with them. As they came down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has risen from death. <laughs> this week to look out at the hills covered in snow, though maybe it was more difficult for those needing to make essential journeys, like going to be vaccinated. We live in a very beautiful part of the world. Sherlock Holmes, the famous detective and his sidekick, Dr. Watson, are reputed to have gone a hike in such countryside, though maybe not in such snowy weather. Come the evening, they took out their tent and they camped. But at some point during the night, Holmes woke Watson and said, Watson, look up, what do you see? And Watson replied, millions of stars. And what do you deduce from that? Holmes asked. And Watson answered, if there are so many stars and planets, perhaps there's one like Earth and there could be life. Holmes looked at him in exasperation and said, Watson, it means that somebody stole our tent. Sometimes, we just don't see what is in front of us. Though I must admit a sympathy with Dr. Watson. Like him, the disciples in our reading from Mark failed to understand fully what was before them when Jesus took them up the mountain. But then the story of the transfiguration is a difficult one 
for us too. With all this talk about Jesus' clothes becoming dazzling white, and the appearance of these two heroes from the Old Testament, Moses and Elijah. Like Moses at the burning bush, or Elijah with the chariots of fire. The transfiguration is beyond our ken, beyond our normal experience. But then perhaps it speaks to us of times when we have been taken out of ourselves, when we have been up a mountain or beside crashing waves at a seashore, when we've been in a great cathedral or else a tiny parish church. And we've had that wow factor or simply felt close to God. The transfiguration was a turning point. And just before it, Peter had confessed that Jesus was the Messiah. But then when Jesus had explained that he had to suffer, the disciples just couldn't get their heads around it. They needed the mountaintop experience to see Jesus in glory with Moses and Elijah beside him, representing the law and the prophets. They needed to hear the voice from heaven affirming Jesus as a beloved son. But it was so much to take in, and that's maybe why Peter suggested building shelters and staying forever. When we have that wow factor, we want to make it last. But often it is too fleeting. And so it was with the disciples. They needed that time on the mountain. And maybe Jesus did too, knowing that the way ahead meant suffering and even death. But Jesus chose to go back down the mountain, down to the crowds with their demands for healing, down to the religious problems of the day, the rivalries, the jealousies, down to where the other disciples were, and down to where we are, down to the discouragements of life and the frustrations of pandemic, down to the way of suffering that led to the cross. Jesus came down the mountain, and that's right at the heart of our Christian faith. For God in Christ came down to be with us and to be for us, to walk alongside us, that we might know God and might have life and life in all its abundance. It's always good to have the wow moments. But we too need to come down the mountain. But when we do, we find ourselves in the company of Christ, who cares for us and cares for all our ups and downs, our hopes and our dreams. And as the hymn says, will never let us go. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.
Let us pray. God of life and God of love, receive our gifts and our very selves as tokens of our love. Bless them and us so that they strengthen the service of love we undertake in Jesus' name. May our lives shine with hope in these difficult days of winter time as we wait for healing and renewal. Ever loving God, we pray today for your church as Christian communities all across Scotland and indeed the world. Help us to face the new challenges and pains and the uncertainty of the future with wisdom so that we may see opportunities for growth and renewal. Give us strength, we pray to work for your kingdom and to carry out your mission. God of glory, we thank you for the tireless efforts of nurses and doctors and consultants caring for patients, and especially those suffering from COVID-19. We ask that you would give all medical staff peace as they care for the sick and peace as many of them wait at the bedside of those who are at the end of life. We think of the work of hospital chaplains giving hope, giving encouragement. And we think of chaplains in other places like prisons as well. We pray for all who've been kept apart from those that they love during this lockdown down time for those who've not been able to mourn for family or friends. We pray for those in care homes and for their relatives. Surround them all with your healing presence. And we remember people in our own communities who are suffering and ask that you lighten the pain and distress of daily life. And in a moment of silence, we bring the prayers of our own hearts before you. Lord, hear these and all our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.
let us pray. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. May the God of peace go with us as we travel from this place. May the love of Jesus keep us firm.